The San Francisco 49ers fall in Super Bowl 58 to the Kansas City Chiefs 25-22. They let this one slip through their fingers. Croc and I here to tell you why. And we still have some game balls to give out from Super Bowl 58. Coming at you right now. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers, Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker at BD Peacock at Crocky 209. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen every day. Really love you guys. Appreciate you all season long. All the everydayers out there, make sure you are subscribed on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcasts. This episode of Locked On 49ers is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. And Croc, I can already see it in your face. Uh, you're biting your tongue over there. Uh, this is a tough one. 49ers lose to the Kansas City Chiefs for uh, for the second time in a row. Uh, four years ago, same result, this time in overtime. This time, the longest game in NFL history in the Super Bowl for, uh, for a game that, uh, as far as clock time goes, I, I saw something that was the seventh longest game ever in NFL history. For you know time, but I don't care about time. This is the longest game in Super Bowl history, Croc. The end of the overtime it took for this game to be settled. 25-22, an ugly score kind of tells you the story of how this game went. And it was an ugly football game. A lot of weirdness on both sides of the ball. And to me, sitting here right now, Croc, as the game just ended, the 49ers let this one get away. This is a game the 49ers should have won. They were the better team on this day. And... They didn't capitalize early, they didn't capitalize middle, and they didn't capitalize late. Uh, we've seen two Super Bowls now, you know, this one in 2019 where the 49ers had a 10-point lead, and both times uh, the lead evaporated, you know, and for different reasons. And obviously, you know, I have my thoughts on uh, how it came to that conclusion. I'm pretty sure you have some as well. But ultimately, the 49ers, I think there were opportunities to extend the lead, and they didn't take advantage of it. I uh, appreciate all the people in the chat. Uh, there's a lot of people with a lot of different opinions on how this game went. I, I want to start at the beginning, Croc, because I think this is where the game was lost. It was missed opportunities. The 49ers were dominating up front, offensive line, defensive line. They were killing the Chiefs in this game. Travis Kelsey's on the sideline, almost knocks his head coach over because he is so frustrated. This is exactly how you wanted it to go if you're the 49ers, yet they could not capitalize because of an untimely Christian McCaffrey fumble on the first drive, a couple of uh, Trent Williams penalties on the second drive. And these are two future Hall of Fame players. These are two of the best players in the entire league, two of the best players in NFL history that the 49ers have on their roster. So you can't point to these players and say, man, I wish Christian McCaffrey wasn't a 49er today. I I wish uh, Trent Williams wasn't a 49er today. But this is the, the 49ers should have been up 14 nothing, 10 nothing. Six nothing at the very least after the first quarter. Yet it was tied at zero to zero because of self-inflicted wounds, and the 49ers shot themselves in the foot when they should have had a really big lead and had a lot more pressure put on the Kansas City Chiefs than they already had on them. And there was a lot of pressure, and they were frustrated. The 49ers were the better team on this day, and they let it slip through their fingers. And that started on the first drive of the game. There's some parallels to 2019 with how this game played out. And I talked about how, you know, I thought the Kansas City Chiefs, especially in the fourth quarter of that 2019 game, they kind of loaded up the box, kind of said, you know what, Jimmy Garoppolo, we're going to load the box. We're going to make you throw the ball, and we're going to make you beat us. And I kind of think they did that same thing in this game. I think for a lot of this game, they said, you know what, we're going to load the box. We're going to load it up against the run. And we're going to make Brock Purdy beat us. That's what we're going to do. And 2019, Jimmy wasn't able to do it. 2023, so that's 24, Brock Purdy was not able to do it. 
They they literally they said there's going to be a lot of people that complain about Kyle Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan going against the run. Matter of fact, we actually starred that. Uh, I'll pull that up now. But we got Amir here. He says game turn when we got away from the run. Kyle, who would love to run the ball a hundred times, does not just get away from the run. It's really based on the looks that the opposing team is giving them. Now, he can do one or two things. He can continue to run into it, or he can try to figure out a way to make them have to play more honest. And when he did the things to try to make them play honest, the execution, for the most part, was poor. And I think that resulted in a loss for the 49ers more than anything else that happened in this game. And as Zeke puts it in the chat, he got forced out of running the ball. Uh, this is one of the things, and I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be perfectly honest. Uh, I'm much less critical of Kyle Shanahan after this Super Bowl loss than four years ago after the Super Bowl loss because uh, I, I think in this game there were so many other things that you can point to as reasons why the 49ers lost this game. Four years ago, I thought Kyle Shanahan should have. Um, for example, he calls an RPO in the third, third or fourth quarter. It's been a while since I went back and watched that game and, and you know, had timestamps on it. But he, he calls an RPO. It's a good play call. It's the right play call. Most times he's getting a certain look from the defense. He calls an RPO and uh, it ends up being a, a, a pass from Jimmy Garoppolo. George Kittle's open. It's the right play call. It's supposed to work. Yet a defensive lineman gets their big old mitts up and batted the ball down. Right. Um, and to me, the mistake is not that it was a bad play call. It, it was that it was a good play call at the wrong time. Don't call an RPO. Don't have a PO call an R right. And, and it's sort of a philosophical thing. And it popped up sometimes in this game as well, where an incomplete pass, if you have a lead, is worse than a zero yard run. And it's it's at a certain point, I do not care what the box count is. I do not care. You hand the ball off to your best player, and maybe he gets some yards, maybe he doesn't, but you shorten the game and you get closer to a W. And if you are doing what the defensive coordinator on the other team wants you to do, you're losing because you're playing into their hands. And I think there was a little bit of that in this game, but I am not going to sit here and put this game, this loss on Kyle Shanahan because there was just too much other weird crap that went on in this game. Uh, Peacock, I, I hear you when you say don't play into the hands of what you know, the defensive coordinator wants you to do, but, and this is not me blaming Brock Purdy. I think Brock Purdy is Brock Purdy. And for a majority of the season, he played exceptionally well. But essentially, he's just saying, you're going to have to show me, Brock Purdy, that you're the guy that everybody says you are. And when you're saying, well, run it regardless into a stacked box, if Brock Purdy is who we all believe he is, then, hey, we just need you to make a couple of these throws. And when anybody says that there's any kind of parallel between Jimmy and Brock, and Brock, Brock is better, all right? But in the sense of, like, how much better and how this game played out, it was identical to how it happened, how it played out. Now, you didn't have the interceptions like you did in the 2019 game. But when I watch this game and I'm looking and I'm, I'm looking at my bros and they're, they're in here and they're watching the game as well, they are loading up. They got guys creeping in late. We are doing everything possible to take away the run. Brock, you're going to have to make throws. And he was under the breast, a guy that was the best in the league throwing, uh, you know, versus the blitz and under pressure and everything. And not just in this moment. We talked about it from the last two games. What did Greg Cosell say? Not the best version of Brock Purdy that we've seen so far in the playoffs. Like, he was not – he hasn't been good. And then you watch this game, and there was some of the same, where the timely plays and throws that you needed from Brock, you did not get them. And the Chiefs – and their defensive coordinator were daring him to make those throws, and it didn't happen in the way that the 49ers needed. I agree to a point, but I will say this, and, and this is where Steve Spagnuolo, the Chiefs defense coordinator, is so good, is that he knows 
and this is what makes Kyle Shanahan so good, right? He uses the defense's rules against them. And Steve Spagnuolo has done such a great job against many coaches in the NFL, Kyle Shanahan included, of using his rules against him. So what does Steve Spagnuolo do? He walks up people in the box. He makes the number count. So look, I know that Kyle Shanahan, when I give this look, is going to get to a better play versus this look, which is going to be a pass play. And he knows that. So knowing that, he says, well, now I already know he's going to check to a pass against this look. He's going to make a certain call against this look. And that's what this play is, is to beat the pass. I'm walking people up to make it look like I'm playing the run. But what this defensive call is, is to beat the pass that I know Kyle Shannon is going to call against the look that I'm giving him. And I think that's what's fascinating about this chess match and the adjustments against the adjustments. And that's why I've talked about it all week long. And I really do think Steve Spagnuolo might have done it again to Kyle Shanahan. I see a lot of people in the comments. There's some very interesting comments. My brother would kind of laugh if he saw this. People were saying that Brock Purdy played great and he did all these things. Now, I'm not going to get Donald on the mic here. But I will say there was somebody said, well, if they're blitzing, then throw screens. I didn't say they were blitzing. All I said was they loaded the box and had a lot of bodies there to defend the run. And that made Kyle try to make them play on it. That's what this is all about. A lot of the first down throws that you guys saw, that's Kyle saying, all right, I have to make this defensive coordinator play defense more honest. And they weren't able to do it. Next, let's talk game balls. We got to give out some game balls. I have an interesting thought here. And throughout the fourth quarter overtime, I was thinking to myself, if the 49ers win this game, who is the MVP? And I think Croc and I might disagree about that. Next. Today's episode of Locked On 49ers is brought to you by Price Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers at Price Picks. We're talking two to six players. All you do is pick more or less than on the Price Picks stat projections of two to six players and watch those winnings roll in. And at Price Picks, it's demon time right now on Price Picks. So you can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks, and you can turn $10 into $1,000 at Price Picks. Demons and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play Price Picks. Squares marked with red demons and green goblins get you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks and if you want to play price picks it is super easy and all you got to do is use our promo code for a deposit match as well up to $100 download the app or go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100 again that is pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL promo code locked on NFL for that price match up to one a deposit match up to $100 price picks daily fantasy sports Made easy. Peacock, yep. before we get started, I got to say one thing. Okay. I see in the chat, and they're like, well, no, no, no. Brock was not the reason the 49ers lost. And I'm actually not saying he's the reason they lost. But in these types of games, in these situations, your quarterback eventually has to be the reason you win. So I'm not saying all oh, the 49ers lost and blame everything on Brock Purdy. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that Brock Purdy played poorly, but what you need from your quarterback in this situation, in that situation, and most of these games, we saw another game. Did, did Patrick Mahomes play so much better than Jimmy Garoppolo in 2019? He threw two interceptions, didn't play exceptionally well throughout the whole thing. Heck, you can go back to last year's Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes and the, and the Chiefs playing against the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't think that, especially if you look at it statistically, you think that Patrick Mahomes just played exceptionally better than Jalen Hurts in that game. No, oh, and in this game, do I think no? But when it was like, hey, this, I need you to be the reason we win now. Like, go out and win the game. In all three of those games, he ended up being the reason they were able to win the game. And the guy on the other side ending with an L because when you were put in certain situations to try to make the plays that this guy is able to make, you couldn't do it. 
So I, I get what everybody's saying. You don't want to blame whatever. And there's all kind of missed extra point, fumble from CMC. There's all kind of things we could talk about. Kyle Shannon before the end of the first half. Let's talk about that. But ultimately, it's going to come down to when it's all said and done, which quarterback is going to end up putting the team on his back when he needs to, when it's good on good, great team versus great team. And so far, more times than not, it ends up being Patrick Mahomes. If if you're saying Patrick Mahomes is a better quarterback than Brock Purdy, yes, obviously. I'm saying when it's fourth and one, you want to read option with Patrick Mahomes and he runs for 10 yards for a first down. It's like, of course, because it's Patrick Mahomes. That I mean, Brock Purdy could take a read option for two yards on a fourth and one just fine. Maybe he can, but he didn't. It, because that was not the call. Circumstances killed the 49ers in this game. Brock Purdy is not even close. He's not even on the list. I've got I've got a notebook here, Croc. I'll show it to the folks. I've got pages of notes. Brock Purdy being a problem is nowhere on this notebook. Brock Purdy. I didn't say he was a problem, Peacock. If the 49ers won the game, Brock Purdy is the MVP of the Super Bowl, Croc. We're talking about 255 passing yards on – hold on, now I lost the uh, – I was I was looking at the turbo, turnover numbers here because this is key to me for, for Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy did not turn the ball over. 23 of 38 passing, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Patrick Mahomes threw the ball 46 times, and he threw two touchdown passes, the game winner at the end. And an interception. Patrick Mahomes was not better than Brock Purdy in this football game, except that he had a guy that was wide open in the end zone at the end of overtime to win the game, Croc. Brock Purdy had zero reason to do with the 49ers losing this game. Brock Purdy was the MVP of the game for the 49ers if they would have won. And they didn't. And and Croc's trying to talk to his brothers about it. And look, I, I think you're getting, I think, I think you're I, I think your folks that you're watching the game with, Croc, might be poisoning the well a little bit because there's some I know there's a lot of haters and a, and a lot of 49ers haters that you're watching games with, and maybe Brock Purdy haters. Um I want to make it very clear. I'm not hating on Brock. Yeah, and I no, think it's gonna I, come down to that. But the at the end of the day, the expectations for the 49ers team were Super Bowl. Yes. Is where that the expectation, and yeah. we know. Like even with Brock, he has very limited experience. He, he has very limited starts. I mean, this is the first time he's been in this type of situation. Maybe it would have helped to have more experience last year um, before he got hit in his in his elbow. And I'm not putting that on him. But I did know that at some point in this game, what you don't want it to come down to was the ball in Patrick Mahomes' hands to eventually go and win the game. Yeah. So Fortnite's had several opportunities leading up to that point to put the game away, and they weren't able to do it. Yes. And when I watched the Kansas City Chiefs and how they were playing defense, they were saying, we're going to force you, Brock Purdy, to beat us. And I'm not saying he played poorly. There's people, oh, he played great. I don't know if he played great. But I didn't think that he played bad at all. I want to make that very clear. I am not saying Brock Purdy played bad, poorly, or anything. But when you're playing at the highest level, this is the biggest game. This will be the most watched thing on television all year. When you're playing in this game, it has to be more than just, oh, he didn't play bad, or maybe he played better than this other guy for 50 minutes out of 60. You have to go above and make certain plays. And they were there to be made. So you talk about a guy being open in the flats, you throw, and, and it's a play call, and that was a game winner. There's a guy, you know, he had somebody in the face pressure. You got guys open. You had Juwan Jennings. He was open on the flat. We missed the throw. Miscommunication, maybe. All right. I saw Brandon Ayuk open, maybe not part of his reads, and, or he couldn't get there quick enough because of the pressure. All right. I'm 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 understanding that. But at the end of the day, plays need to be made, and the plays were not made. So there's people that, you know, oh, I ain't saying Purdy sucks. I, I really like Purdy. And you can't take anything away from Purdy with the season that he had this year. But it definitely came down to who's going to make the plays that need to be made. And one guy made them. And that's why the 49ers lost. And I'm not saying that because of Brock. But yeah. I'm just saying there's one guy that made the plays that need to be made. Who, who do you think, if 49ers won that game, who's the MVP? Uh, Chris Conley or Juwan Jennings? <laughs> How wild would that be? Uh, if we're going game balls, can we get the first game ball to revenge game, former chief Chris Conley? He came up big. 
And, and it's wild to think that a guy that's running down on kick coverage could make that big of an impact. But a game that that's that's that close, that's that ugly, that's got a a, a goofy score, and and there's turnovers that uh, the special teams played a role, and it played a huge role in this game. And uh, if we're giving out game balls, uh, I've got a lot of game balls to give out. Surprisingly, in a, in a Super Bowl loss for the 49ers, I, I think Chris Conley gets one of those game balls. I was very impressed with how he played on special teams, making multiple tackles. He did a terrific job making a big catch um, on third down early in this game. That was really exciting to see. Terrific timing, terrific throw from Brock Purdy, who everybody thinks I'm saying he played poorly. But that was a terrific throw uh, with timing and anticipation from Purdy. I felt like he was a touchdown, like a random touchdown. You know, sometimes there's that random touchdown someone has. I yeah. thought he was a random touchdown away from potentially being uh, in a Super Bowl MVP favorite. But one of the guys I mentioned was Juwan Jennings. Yeah. And when you throw a touchdown, you catch a touchdown, which he had to fight for that. That was terrific. He also had some key third down plays, uh, conversions. And, man, I mean, really close at the end of – or close to the, you know, they're, they're on their last possession to running that out route and converting another third down. So I think Jawan Jennings was really close to potentially being the Super Bowl MVP. Yeah, I, I can't argue with that with Jawan Jennings. I think in reality, Purdy would have won because it was a weird, ugly game and there wasn't an obvious pick and it goes to the quarterback by default. But man, Jawan Jennings, I think, was, was player of the game for the 49ers. The touchdown pass which was, you know, schemed up again. Um, if, if we're going to say that about the uh, the game-winning touchdown for Patrick Mahomes, we've got to say it for Juwan Jennings and his touchdown pass, right? Um, but uh, a, a few more notes here, Croc, about how this one got away, why it got away, and some game balls to give out from Super Bowl 58 next. This episode of Locked on 49ers is brought to you by DoorDash. DoorDash is the all-in one app for your everyday needs, of course, for your football watch parties, for any time watch parties, for any time parties, for any time dinner, lunch, treats. But how about from restaurants to groceries to flowers and gifts? So next time you're running low on dinner ideas, pet supplies, or maybe just running low on time, you can get so much more than you realize delivered from DoorDash, whatever watch party or anything party you've got coming up, whatever you're cooking up together, maybe you just need one ingredient. You need to go uh, get that DoorDash to you so you can finish whatever watch party you have going on. Get it delivered with DoorDash. And of course, football season may be over now, but uh, we're in the thick of basketball games. Uh, we've got March Madness coming up as well, which is a great time to have a watch party. And of course, Major League Baseball coming up. As well, I think I might uh, head over to spring training and have some fun doing some watch parties there. So get dinner for tonight, groceries for the week, or a consolation prize for your sad friends in uh, San Francisco in the Bay Area, all on DoorDash. DoorDash, your door to more. Head to the DoorDash app to get everything you need delivered. Whew, all right, Croc. Um, we're going to talk about uh, before halftime. Yeah. Did you have any issues with, with what transpired there? Most I, people I, didn't, but I saw it. I, I clearly saw it a different way. I hate it. I, I, I hate. I, I don't know what the process is for Kyle Shanahan there before the half. And I've heard him explain it when he has the ball. So you're trying to get the double up, right? You're trying to get the the double dip. You score, you get the ball back, and you score again. But he didn't have the ball after the halftime. He didn't get the second half kickoff in this game. So I don't know how you don't call a timeout earlier, especially after first down, you stuff that play to have an opportunity to get the ball back and do something. And then he eventually called the timeout later with 20 seconds left. You could have had time to actually do something. So I I would have called it earlier, and I would have not called it later because then it doesn't matter because it's too late. So I, I do have a big problem with that, and it's it's something that's that's dog Kyle Shanahan for a while and some of those game management uh, decisions, especially in the half, and he plays it really conservative, and he did it hit again in this game. In a game that has a score like it, like it was at that point, uh, I think you have to give yourself a chance to get down there, especially with the way the 49ers were, were really – 
destroying the, the, the Chiefs up front. Get down and, and, and kick a long field goal from your guy who just had set the record for the longest field goal in Super Bowl history. You know, I, I, I first I want to start off with a positive so people don't think that I'm hating or some of the other things, things they're saying in the comments right now. Later in the game, Kyle Shanahan had an opportunity to, to kind of, you know, just kick a field goal. And nobody would have blamed him at all for that. But he said, no, like, I'm going to be aggressive right now in this moment. We're going to go for it. He ended up going for it. And eventually that turned into a field, uh, touchdown. Now, your kicker missed the extra point. It got blocked, whatever. But just the thought process of we can tie this game 13-13 or we can go for the touchdown. And he did it. And I love that. And that was aggressive, Kyle. I would like to see that version of him at other times of the game when it's maybe not as tight to the end of the game. And when you go back to the end of the first half, you have roughly a minute left and they have first and goal inside the 10. Boom. You tackle them. You get a stop. Right. Or no, excuse me. They could have gotten the first down. So maybe they're right outside the 10 around the 12 or 13 or whatever, but you stuff them. That is a great opportunity to call a timeout and have roughly right around a minute left. And then they run another couple of plays. They're probably throwing the next two times. Maybe they get an incompletion. Maybe they don't, but you can use another timeout, et cetera. But you'd hope at that time to get the ball back around with around 42, 45 seconds left with hopefully one timeout left, maybe none. And then we'll see what happens from there. But what Kyle Shanahan decided to do was, and I tweet this out, I don't understand this. And these are the things that I dislike about Kyle. There's a lot to like and love. The, the 49ers have been in like four out of the last five conference championship games. They've been in multiple Super Bowls. This is a terrific coach. But if there's one thing that you would like to see him do in these kind of games is be a little bit more aggressive and call games to win the game as opposed to lose the game. All right. And in that moment, I felt like, oh, okay, we're up 10 0. Yeah, you're up 10 0, but they are about to score unless you get a takeaway. They are about to score. Okay. And then they get the ball back at halftime. So you are a possession away, you know, after they get this score from either being tied or them taking the lead. You have to be a little bit more aggressive prior to halftime and trying to get some points and still that level of confidence in your players. All right. And still that level of confidence into your offense that, hey, we're going to get the ball back. Get ready because we're going to go down and we're going to get some points before this half. And I thought him not being aggressive in that moment, it was kind of weak. And we've seen that from him. You talked about him potentially being that guy um, when he has the ball. But when you don't have the ball and they're able to score and they get the ball back at halftime, this would be a great opportunity for you to instill this confidence that we're going to go down, get points, and we, we are going to go and win this game. And he didn't do it. Mina Kimes, she had quote tweet, tweeted me. And she's like, well, Croc, you know, like Kyle has the lead. That's not what and it's like. Well, yeah, he has. And I actually put in quotes, the lead. He has the lead. But that lead can evaporate in one possession after halftime. At the you time, have to be more aggressive. At the time you're talking about, too, the Chiefs have the opportunity to score, get the ball back, score again. And guess what? You don't have the lead and you never had the ball in between at all. Exactly. That's why you call timeout. That's why you try to get the ball back and keep the momentum you already have. Because you already got them, you got them, you got the star tight end yelling at the head coach, almost knocking them over on the sideline. Keep that momentum, keep that pressure on the Chiefs. It, it, it uh, was tough, you know. Someone in the comments said, "Croc, did Andy Reid." Look, I don't know what Andy Reid doing, but I know what we've seen from Kyle Shanahan, and yeah. I'm looking at this. There's no lead that's safe enough. I wanted to play the video. Everybody knows what video I'm talking about. Richard Sherman tweeted me like, "Croc, can't wait for you to play a video." I wanted to play the video. I couldn't play the video at all. No. Even when the front eyes were up 10-0, I no. never felt comfortable. Definitely not there. Do, do, do something for me to feel a little bit more confident and comfortable uh, with the 49ers. And I felt like in that moment right there, hey, man, like, let's call even before half. Let's be more aggressive. Let's be more so let's, let's, let's tell Andy Reid, hey, you might need to be a little bit more aggressive because we're going for it. Now, that, that was, and if we're, if we're standing here right now, 49ers being 0-2 in Super Bowls, between 2019 and 2023, so that's 24 with Kyle Shanahan, the head coach. And you're wondering maybe why. I think it's because of things like that, even more so than anything else that we've talked about on the show. We had a problem with both of his first end of first half aggressiveness, conservativeness 
issues. We had a problem with that both times. I also think that's not the reason they lost the game. And I want to go to uh, Bro Volcane here in in the chat. And it's something you talked about a little bit earlier, Croc. And I'm not going at you. And obviously, Patrick Holmes is an amazing guy. And he's a great quarterback. And was he a better quarterback in this game? Yeah, and, and he won. Brock Purdy was not bad. The The difference in quarterbacks is not why the 49ers lost the game. And, and I will definitely die on that hill. And, and he says, uh, the truth is that the better quarterback made plays when they needed to be made. In addition, you cannot kick a field goal when you need a touchdown. They lost the game at that very moment. Painful. This game, I, I think it's an oversimplification. simplification. And I think people are getting it wrong if they're saying, Patrick Mahomes beat Brock Purdy. That's why the 49ers lost. The 49ers lost this game because they were dominating their opponent and fumbled the ball back to him on the first drive. They were dominating their opponent opponent, and then had a had two penalties. And were, those plays are from their star players, right? You couldn't even begin to start pointing at Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy when, when Christian McCaffrey coughs up a ball when you're about to go down and score in the opening drive of a Super Bowl. When Trent Williams has a, a false start, which is unacceptable for a, a guy of his caliber, right? And then, uh, then following it up with a with a holding penalty to take you out of any scoring opportunity. When you have just this weird punt return, bangs off one of your uh, one of your guys' foot, and and you muff a punt and give the ball up to your opponent in a game where they can't score on you and you give them the ball in the red zone. Like you have to point to all of those things well before you start to get any of the stuff about Brock Purdy, any of it um, about what Pastor Mahomes did so great to go win again against the 49ers uh, about pointing fingers at the coaching staff, whether it's Kyle Shanahan or Steve Wilkes. Those are the reasons the 49ers lost this game. That's why this one feels like it slipped away so much maybe even more than 2019 because they were so good in this game and there's there was there was everything else could have been the same and they let it slip through their fingers with those just unfortunate plays that you just can't account for in, in any way to say that like man Trent Williams like <laughs> Christian McCaffrey fumbled um like Darrell Luter, get out of the way so the ball doesn't hit you in the foot and you muff a punt. Like any one of those things doesn't happen. The 49ers are on a podium right now with confetti on top of their heads. You you mentioned a lot of different things that could potentially change the game, but but ultimately, like those kind of things happen in every game. In these big games, and you can go back to, I don't know, maybe every Super Bowl since maybe the the uh, Seahawks versus Broncos and then the Broncos versus Panthers where outside of those two games for the most part it's typically about which quarterback eventually outside of everything else that goes on in this game makes more plays at the end of the game than the other quarterback like it typically comes down to that so we can talk about again all of those things and I think if anybody said well the the CMC fumble the blocked extra point you know uh Maybe the defense not getting these key stops. I think you can always say like those things. And you would be 100% correct. But for me, it's always going to come down to which quarterback at the end of the game makes the plays that need to be made in that moment. Because these Super Bowl games are good on good. And it comes down to those guys. So uh, even if, it, if this was, let's say the 49ers came out on top. They would have came out on top. Because Brock Purdy ended up making more plays than than Patrick Mahomes, and I would be up here right now saying, "Hey, I, there were some clunky things in this game, but at the end of the day, Brock Purdy made some throws in this game and some plays, and maybe a play that wasn't there to be made, like that, that third down and goal play in overtime, where man, that's a tough play, right? You got guys in your, you got pressure, man. How do you see Brandon Ayuk in the back of the end zone and hit him for the game winner?" It was, it was going to take something like that. And the play wasn't made. And I'm not putting the game on him or the loss on him. I don't want – but I know what it takes to win these Super Bowls. And more times than not, it's a guy making the play, and Mahomes may end up making more plays. One more quick note on, um, on the Spagnolo versus Shanahan and how the Chiefs wanted to play this, force the ball into Brock Purdy's hands, not so much – 
because they thought Brock Purdy was bad. But this is, uh, and I'm going to go to chat here real quick from uh, Jesus, who says, wide receivers were getting locked up. They were strapped. There was some truth to that. So let me let me break it down again for you one more time. And we got to get out of here. We're going long. Hey, the 49ers just lost the Super Bowl. Sorry, Ross Jackson, NFL channel manager here at Locked On. We're going a little long today. Apologies in advance. Um, you are C Spagnolo. You know you're so good on the back end. What do you do? You stuff the box, you force Kyle's hand, you force Brock Purdy's hand to, to can the play to the pass. You say we're going to lock up your guys, and again, um, I, I think there's something to that. I think it was a big factor in it. And while uh, you could say Spagnolo, Andy Reid, bested Kyle Shanahan in this game, you could say that Patrick Holmes made the plays he needed to play to win the game. That's why the Chiefs won the game. Um, again, even after all of that. I would still say Brock Purdy, MVP trophy, confetti on his head, if not for Chris McCaffrey fumble, if not for a ruined second drive from Trent Williams' mistakes, if not for muff punt, not for a blocked field goal, which one point would have made a big difference when you're tied going into overtime, right, Croc? Um, but there's some truth to the wide receivers, got locked up and the Kansas city chiefs back into their defense, I think did a great job in this game. And that makes life more difficult for your quarterback when your wide receivers are not open. But when they are open, you got to make the throw that's there. Who who threw the ball at the back of the end zone? Debo Samuel beat the guy on that uh, slip up the seam. You got the Kyle Shanahan called the play. He dialed it up is right there. Ball overthrown to Debo Samuel in the end zone. Again, there are opportunities. And my guy, Flea Diddy, he says, people missing your points, Croc. I, I know. It, it's okay. I can take that. But there were opportunities for the 49ers to win this game. And the plays weren't made. So it was always going to come down to that. We I, knew that. We knew that. What were we, we said all along, 49ers are the better team. What were we worried about? One guy. 60 minutes, four quarters is what I was worried about. I was worried about one guy making more plays than the other. Yeah, that's all we, again, we we talked all this. We how many however many games they played, all that stuff. We talked about all that. But in the Super Bowl, we knew it would come down, or at least I knew it would come down to make more plays than Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Uh, uh, my, my I guess my point is that that shouldn't have mattered. Pat, Patrick Mahomes, cool. You're better than Brock Purdy, but guess what? We've got a 14 nothing lead at the end of the first quarter. Instead, it was a 0 0 lead. And that wasn't because that wasn't something that Patrick Mahomes did. He had zero to do with that, nothing to do with it. The Niners didn't lose the Super Bowl because Patrick Mahomes was the better quarterback and made the plays he needed to win the game. That's not why the 49ers lost the Super Bowl. Period. It, all right. That's how it ended. That's not why they lost it. Peacock, we could talk about this for an hour about all the little things, like all the things that led to how it ended out the way it did. We can we can spend 30 more. If everybody wants me to break down every situation and maybe a missed sack or this, like we can do that. And if you want me to uh, find different ways of how you can blame the defense with, hey, where are the eyes on Travis Kelsey? I said bracket Travis Kelsey leading up to this game. You got to make somebody else beat you. Travis Kelsey, you got a guy outside shade, Logan Ryan. Have somebody that's going to catch him on the opposite side when he does his things. Did I not talk about that before the game? You did. It, it, and he's catching, and I'm watching how they're doing. Uh, they're playing it soft. He's settling down in zones. All the things I expected him to do. They're, they didn't reroute them, which I expect to. Do. We, we can talk about those things. But ultimately, it was always going to come down to which quarterback makes the plays to win the game. And Brock had opportunities to go above what was presented to him. And when those opportunities happened, he didn't do it. Again, I'm not putting it on him. But I'm saying the other guy eventually did do it. And we could talk about everything else. But 
right now we're upset. We're feeling down because 49ers are going going home. And where do you go from here? This was as great of an opportunity as you have. And, and maybe you can say, well, Brock has his experience. He's going to get black. Man, it's tough to get here. It's tough. And I think because we've seen the 49ers in so many conference championship games and all this, it's like, oh, they'd be back. It's tough. 49ers haven't won a Super Bowl since uh, my little daughter's standing here. She's watching the game. She's seven years old. I was seven years old last time 49ers won a Super Bowl. So there's got to be a different kind of sense of urgency when having this conversation. It's tough. I think it's a great way to end it. Where do the 49ers go from here? And no doubt that's going to be the topic on the next edition of Locked On 49ers as the 49ers come up short once again, lose Super Bowl 58 to the Kansas City Chiefs 25-22. Croc and I back tomorrow. We're going to talk about what the 49ers need to do to take the next step. Draft season officially has started now for all 32 teams in the NFL. And uh, we've got you covered as we do every day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We love you. We appreciate all the everydayers out there. We're going to have to do therapy pods, I think, to get ready for this 2024 awesome. You're going to have to do a therapy pod for me, Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> We might have to get together, and uh, um, we had some drinks in the city last we, night. We have yeah, to get we, do that again uh, a little bit more often, a lot sooner than I thought we were going to have to. We were together last night. We're going to have to get it, get together soon and and have a long discussion about where we go from here. Yeah, absolutely. Shout right. out to my cousin. I see my cousin Armand in the chat, man. What's up, Armand? Big big yeah. listener of the podcast. Let's go. Uh, Love all the listeners out there, all the everydayers. If it's your first time, we appreciate you. Come stick around. We're here with you every day here, and we will continue to be with you every day throughout the offseason as we get ready for the quest for six that now continues for the San Francisco 49ers. Croc and I back tomorrow right here, Locked On 49ers. Maybe next year. <laughs>